Now we just need to mix the rubber and the glue in the correct proportion. Or in the mixture, pack it in there, allow it to dry. But we want to test their durability and see how they do on these super high-tech studs. Either follows. So we recently covered a car in rubber turf. That stuff proved to be super durable. And we got a few people suggesting we try using this sort of compound to make a set of tires. So pretty much going back to the roots. Okay, let's make them and try them out then. DIY run flat tires made from rubber granules. Will they work? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Look here, guys, we've prepared some wheels, a few bands made out of 200-liter drums. Their diameter is about the same as that of a tire. We've given the wheels a grind to ensure better adhesion, and we've welded on some buckles, I guess you can call them, or a bit of extra reliability. And when we place the wheel in here, well, we're looking at quite a lovely picture. Now we just need to mix the rubber and the glue in the correct proportion. From there we pour the mixture into these molds, make sure it's well packed, and after that we wait for the whole thing to dry. Okay, let's carry on. So we filled the molds, packed the rubber, and it is looking good after it is dried. But there is one thing I should mention. The molds themselves, they're uh, pretty deep, then you've got the film, everything is hermetically sealed, and beyond this portion that is dried, well, the thing is that we need the rest of it to also dry. As such, it is time to extract these tires. And so we've extracted a couple of these wheels, and this is rather interesting. Just as I pointed out earlier, if you look closely, you'll see the layer that is dried, and the portion that hasn't yet. This part is sticky, but it's maintaining its shape. That is nice. And right next to the wheel itself, where some air was seeping in, the edge has gotten dry. Okay, let's wait for this to fully dry. If you want to put some turf down at your house, make sure it's a thin layer for it to dry quicker. Well, guys, we've waited for a long time for these to fully dry, and uh, fingers crossed they have. I'm sure they have. And now we got ourselves a nice set of wheels. They look pretty neat, and as you can see, they even bounce slightly. We've got some branding on there, and over here, as you can see, this is of a bespoke size. You won't be able to find anything like this in a store. The only thing I'm apprehensive about is the weight aspect. First, let's see how much the stock wheel is going to weigh. I'm seeing 11 kilos on the scale. But then it is hollow, you got air inside that barely weighs anything. And now let's put this monolithic wheel onto the scale. Already I can tell it's way more than 11 kilos. 
29. But then there is nowhere inside, the whole thing is filled with material, so you're not even going to be able to puncture it. It's fully puncture-proof. As for their durability, well, I expect them to have some friction. But let's go ahead and throw these onto a car and see how they do. Let's get to it. Here we go. Taking it easy. This is first gear and honestly... I'm driving along and if I didn't know the type of wheels were running, I wouldn't even... But then again, uh, they're pretty stiff. Yeah, they are on the stiff side. They don't give you any damping, so the ride is quite hard. It's as if they're overinflated. But then you obviously don't have any air inside of them, so... They can't really give in all that much. They're essentially one big piece. But we are rolling. Perhaps if I try going a bit faster. Let me ask if everything's alright. Are we looking good? Excellent. But I really want to evaluate their overall behavior. In terms of how the car steers? And it does. Will it stop, though? Yeah, and braking performance is actually pretty good. That is pretty nice. Let me try coming to a stop on the ice. Yeah, I wouldn't say they provide a ton of grip, but hey, at the very least, the car does stop. Which can be a bad thing. So they do provide some grip. We are doing very well. I just put the gearbox into fourth. And I do feel a bit of vibration as we didn't balance these. But the braking action is pretty good, look at that. That was almost 60 kilometers an hour and let's try braking. The thing breaks pretty well. Driving around with a plum. Check this out, guys. The tires, they have some decent grip. And though you do realize that the tires are not of the type that contain any air, yeah, that really comes through the suspension. Anyway, I'm sure all of us would be pretty disappointed if we forego the opportunity to try and make these wheels grip the surface properly. And by surface, of course, I mean the ice. And the simplest way to do that would be to just put a bunch of screws in them. These are true racing studs we got poking out from there. Yeah, the heads are sticking out by quite a lot. Anyway, the point is that we want to test their durability and uh, see how they do on these super high-tech studs. These uh, makeshift rubber turf tires of ours. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so we're all set. And now it's time for us to go for a drive. I don't sense any changes at this low of a speed. Feels exactly the same as it did before. No difference whatsoever. You can feel that the tires are on the stiff side. But then at this speed I have yet to feel any meaningful changes. It's all exactly the same. You know, I think we'd better try braking while we're driving over the ice. Oh yeah, and the braking action is just terrific. That was awesome. I mean... Like on dry pavement. Also, the straight line acceleration is pretty good. 
And it steers decently, I mean... There is a bit of understeer as for the rattling. That's most likely bumps in the ice itself. Oh my! I'm being a bit more aggressive than before. Being a bit more pedal happy to get the rear wheels to actively spin. And it is actually not easy at all to induce oversteer. So this is actually quite interesting. The engine doesn't seem to have enough power to get the rear end to step out. What do you know? There we are, now we're cooking. But the engine... Wow, take a look at that. They are cutting into the ice deep, and also pretty evenly. Laying down a pretty nifty pattern. This is where we had slippage. And take a look at that, those cuts are pretty... Those are the two rows of screws that we put into the tires. And they are biting hard into the ice. Cool stuff, what can I say? So they've got quite a bit of grip. But we set out to test the tires, not the studs necessarily. And the amazing thing about these tires is that uh, they are holding up beautifully. They're not crumbling, not falling apart. I don't see any chunks falling off of them. And that's great, this has been a success. Anyway, now I suggest we remove all of the studs and slowly, carefully just make our way back to our facility. The drive is a few kilometers, so let's see how these behave in regular city driving conditions. Okay, then remove the studs and let's bounce. Okay, guys, so it's all good. The wheels held up, nothing fell apart on the way here. So this worked the full 107%. Tell us what you think, feel free to try this out. And that's all I got for you, see you guys later. This is from the aluminum thing on the gear stick, can you imagine? 